I'm not taking this. I'm not taking this from her, man. We're making the new man. I think that crazy bitch has lost her mind. You have her ball and chain to this house. Just bring my wife back now and get rid of her. You know what? I'm sorry, you guys. I got to stop lying to you. Literally every episode of this Wife Swap show so far, I've been saying, oh, this is the craziest one. This is the most toxic one, but bar none. Okay, they have outdone themselves again. All four adults in this episode of Wife Swap are so toxic and just insanely mean to each other that I cannot believe it. Make sure you watch until the very end because this episode is full of insane moments, but without any further ado, let's get right on into it. So the first family we're going to be seeing today are the Harrises. They're an archetype that we have seen many times on this show. Basically, the father goes and works and he says the wife's got to stay home and cook the food do the chores get the kids ready for school the only issue is this woman also works a full-time job many times working overtime into the late hours of the night and then this guy who runs the family forces her to wake up in the morning just so she can make him coffee because apparently that's too much for his morning schedule we'll get into that though so basically he's kind of the bully of his household and on the other side we have the van noise which is a couple made up of a woman who has a very successful career at a car dealer She's kind of the one that says that she wears the pants in the relationship, aka she makes all the decisions. And the husband back home is a stay-at-home dad who's an inspiring actor, and let's just say his career is pretty dead. So anyways, these two wives are about to swap sides, and this episode is quite interesting because basically they have the two bullies of each family going together, and then the two passive side of the relationship located in the other house. I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. We don't agree with mothers who choose to have a career instead of being full-time moms. You guys have got to be joking. In my opinion, a man, they work full-time or more than full-time. So there you just saw the Van Noy mother who is reading the Harris's guidebook and basically it's just full of old school BS mentality when it comes to relationships. The guy should be the one who goes and does the hard work and everything. And even the wife of this Harris family at the other house repeats that same sentiment. But the thing I have to mention to you guys that they talk about in the intro here this lady who just said the man is the one who should be working full-time if not more is working full-time if not more on a real job herself she's a transcriptionist for a hospital or something like that basically she's typing out transcripts of audio recordings they took or videos and they said sometimes she's working until 3 or 4 a.m having to crunch as well as do all the chores around the house do the grocery shopping do the laundry anything that involves their family she has to be in charge of so it's kind of insane she's been brainwashed into thinking that the guy is supposed to do that yet she doesn't look in the freaking mirror and, and realize she's having to do the same stuff. I expect the house to be clean when I get home. If the house looks crappy, I can be a b He's a lazy, slob, male, chauvinist pig. <laughs> and the dichotomy between these two already, dude. Okay, I can tell that this Van Noy mother is not going to be holding back. She seems very confrontational already. Yes, she's just sitting in their kitchen reading their rules as both the wives have just arrived to each other's houses. I should have mentioned that in the intro, but also if you've been watching the videos, you know how this show goes by now. They've officially swapped places. That's them kind of getting a read for the family before they meet them. And yeah, it's already very bad vibe from the Harrises. Uh, so much old school thinking when it comes to the way that they run their family if that's how they want to do it they can but it is pretty toxic the way this man handles his wife and pretty much expects her to be a housemaid and nothing more so the wives meet each other's families and off rip this van noy mother is very tense and standoffish but then her husband back home seems very inviting with his new wife the dude honestly seems very cool this is the actor guy i was talking about uh his name is hallmark which is quite insane i think that's a fake made up actor's name but it also should not be legal to name yourself after a card company slash crappy movie making company because I just don't want to be having to call somebody Hallmark. That is an insane name. Shorten it to Mark, bro. She just reminds me of an old friend and she seems really warm and friendly and sweet and very real and very genuine. So you know, I couldn't be more pleased. See, like literally Hallmark is just, I want to say he's a Hallmark guy, but he really is just a kind soul in the intro, at least here so far. Meanwhile, the other Harris dad is like, yeah, she kind of stands her own ground and I'm not used to a woman, you know, disobeying what I say. So I'm going to have to get used to that. She's going to be piping up left and right, I'm sure. Just like a total jerk. The difference between these dads is insane so far. So then the first day happens and this Harris wife is going to a job at a actual location for the first time in a long time. Again, she works from home. She does have a job 
job, but she's not used to going somewhere where her whole family is not needing, you know, to be bathed and everything throughout the day. And she's just repeating these annoying, toxic viewpoints that you know she just inherited from either her family or her husband. But she's like, I don't know why she leaves her house and leaves her daughter, you know, even though, yeah, she's at school and everything. I think she should be at home making food and stuff, being in the kitchen. I really don't think that a woman should have a successful career. That's not how I run my house. And then on the other side, <laughs> this other Van Noy mother is having a very tough time cooking for the entire family, dealing with them on top of this strenuous eight plus hour a day job of being a hospital transcriptionist or whatever it's called. It reaches a boiling point and already she begins yelling at this dude. And don't worry, the toxic, like I guess you could say masculinity that this Harris dad has passed on to his wife carries out in so many odd ways. I mean, it shows a scene of Hallmark walking his stepdaughter into school, which is what he does as a guy who does not have a job. His wife is working. What the hell else do you want the kid to do to get to school? Somebody's got to take him. But this lady brings up the most toxic point. She's seeing them walk in and she turns it into a creepy thing. She's like, yeah, where I'm from, the mothers drop off the kids at school. And it's kind of weird to see him doing this. And it just kind of gives off a creepy vibe. Like, first of all, screw you for insinuating that. That's very weird. And second of all, what about the kids out there that don't have a mother? Or maybe they have two dads. Like, it's just such an ignorant viewpoint. Already, I dislike this mother and the Harris family. They have very old school thoughts. But this is all, this would, he would have listed everything he's done since he's been an actor for the last 18 years. And it's all on one page. So then as if her new job wasn't enough, this Karen mother who is, you know, of the Harris family, I'm just going to call her the Karen mom because she is, you can tell so far. What you just saw her doing at work is going through Hallmark's acting file. I have no idea why the producers gave this to her, but maybe she asked for information on his acting career because again, he works from home, is kind of in between roles, he says, and she looks at it for the past 18 years, this man has not had many roles except for being an extra in shows. So to her, she literally thinks that he is the biggest loser now because he does doesn't work a job, let alone a manual labor job like her husband who does construction, she literally sees him as less than a man. It's actually insane. The disdain this woman has for anybody who lives a lifestyle outside of her own is ridiculous. And then when she gets home, she pretty much bullies this guy and tells him to his face that his acting career is going nowhere, he's disappointing his family, and that he's not a true man for not working a manual labor job. She actually says the words manual labor job, as if implying that if he did go out and become a successful business man and he's working at a desk somewhere that's not real work because he didn't i don't know break his back by the time he's 50 years old and have to go on workers comp like every other construction worker in the freaking planet it's just such a caveman way of thinking and she has shown this throughout this episode so far like five different ways okay well then why is she doing two full-time jobs because it takes her seven hours to finish the transcription she chose to do two jobs she wants to do two jobs she why wants to don't you help her and as you can see things are popping off at the harris household i gotta say i i agree with this woman i see why she's so angry this guy really does act like a chauvinist pig he thinks his wife is just there to take care of the house we've been over that but the way that she's delivering this message is not effective she's immediately starting to scream and this guy seems like the type of guy where if you scream at him in general he's not going to want to interact with you especially if you are somebody he just met and you're screaming at him in his face like you can repeat these things a little bit nicer and i think that's this lady's main problem she's very mean already like off rip i don't know if she has previous biases maybe she thinks he's a redneck or something but she's being very aggressive in the way Way that she's like yelling at this guy to stop treating his wife poorly and again i agree with her message i just think she could be nicer about it you have her ball and chain to this house maybe she should organize her day better no, Jimmy, maybe you should lighten up and start treating her like a person and knocking employee. And yeah. dude, she's just shouting. I don't know if the kids are home, but like if they are, there's no need for this. This is already an insane thing for these kids to go through being on this show. And now they got to be in this toxic environment. I'm saying this as somebody who had people yelling in his household growing up 24 seven. It is trash to be in that environment. So hopefully the kids are at school right now. But like I said, she's she's just very mean in the way that she's going about this. And if you're going to be butting heads with somebody, you want to at least try to remain cordial when you're speaking to them. If if you want your message to go through at all. Otherwise, this dude's just gonna get pissed off and be like, what does she know? She comes in my house and thinks she knows everything. She should be making me dinner right now. And that type of backwoods redneck philosophy is absolute. I'm really looking forward to changing the rules tomorrow because 
Jimmy needs to wake up. And yeah, like I said, I think she kind of sees this guy as being some redneck hillbilly, which yes, he might be just an average dude who's working construction pretty dumb and has some old school morals, but you can still treat him like a human. I think that's, you know, something that we should try to be doing with everybody. She then goes on a little rant in her little interview room talking about how she can't wait to change the rules. And this is where I see red flags left and right in this show. As soon as the people start to be like really excited to make the other person's life a living hell the next week, it seems like you kind of lose the plot of the show. You're supposed to be bringing new qualities to each family, not having a competition of who can make each other more miserable in the week that they have control. So anyways, this first week is done. It's full of a lot of fighting, as you saw. Now it's time for the rule change. As for the Harris mother in the Van Noy household, she tells this actor dude that his acting career is over. He's gonna go work some full-time jobs and she doesn't even let him choose what type of full-time job. She has a line of manual labor jobs lined up for him. <laughs> if that isn't the most idiotic thing, I mean, obviously this dude's not gonna do well on a construction site when he's just been a stay-at-home dad, failing actor his entire life. And of no surprise, the Van Noy mother tells the Harris father that he has to stay at home. He's not gonna be going to work this next week. Instead, he's gonna be the one working on the wife's transcription job for eight plus hours a day while taking care of the entire family. And you know, maybe this will give him some perspective of how to appreciate his wife more and maybe share some of the chores. Another messed up thing this Karen mom does is she talks to the Van Noy daughter and is like, yeah, I'm gonna show you what it's like in a real household. Your daddy's gonna go to work like fathers should do. And mommy's gonna teach you how to be a good little house servant. I'm gonna teach you how to cook a meal for the family. Like, I I'm not saying in any means that it's not good to teach your children how to have culinary, you know, expertise when it comes to cooking and providing for themselves. That's something good to do. But the way she's framing this is again, so rooted in misogyny and just ridiculousness, toxic masculinity, and she doesn't even know it. So now we move on to <laughs> the most deranged shot I have seen in this show so far. Again, we've seen some mean, cruel things happen. We've had animals taken away, a lot of stuff like this. But I want you to think of working for something, even if you don't get much work, if you're passionate about acting like this guy has been, and you've been trying to make it in this field for 20 years, what is the worst possible thing to happen to you? Somebody telling you to your face how much of a embarrassment and loser you are to your family. And then going the extra mile, this Karen mother tells the Van Noy husband that he needs to go out back and burn his entire collection of acting materials, his headshots, his resumes. He needs to burn them in the fire pit. Yes, that's right. I mean, you can see these shots. She's standing in the back maniacally smiling as this dude is literally watching his dreams burn into a pile of trash. <laughs> this is so dark on so many levels. I know it's very comedic. Like, I just want to laugh my ass off right now, but it's very sad for this dude. This has to be a tumultuous time in his life. So that's right. It's time for this dude to go head out for his first construction job. And this Karen mother got her best wishes. She finally gets to take the kids to school, which is what a mother has to do. Of course, you're just not a good mother if you let your husband help out sometimes and take your kids off to freaking school in case you need to do something in the morning. God forbid. But it's really funny this episode so far. The two passive people have been pretty much in a constant fight over who gets to stay home and take care of the kids and do housework because that's what they think they're destined and supposed to do. And then on the other side, you have the two aggressive people trying to control who has to stay home because they both don't want to freaking do it. Jimmy, clean the shower for your new wife, Jimmy. And man, the mean streak continues with this Van Noy mother. I don't know why she's so freaking angry and mean. Yes, I understand. It's frustrating to see a man act this way, but the dude is doing it. Like he's over there sitting, trying to do the transcription job. And this lady is just laying on the couch, going out of her way to really egg him on and yell at him. Like, are you doing it fast enough? Are you typing? Which also, this is a guy who's been working construction his whole life. I mean, look at this dude. You could tell he's one of those dudes who just has one finger on each key going, you know, piece by piece. Like, okay, uh, type at three words per minute. He's not going to be very fast at this transcription stuff, yet he's getting whined at and he actually has to leave the house to cool off because this lady is just screaming at him for no reason. In a different setting, I would force him to do it or I would fire him and Dawn needs to either force him to do it or get rid of him. And I mean, this mentality is just so stupid. Like I said, everybody in this episode so far has been so toxic, but you can tell this lady has such bad control issues. I have no idea what's going on in her life, but she seems desperate to have some control over everybody in her family. I mean, she literally walks over this acting husband of hers. I think it's because he understands he gets to have a roof over his head without working. So he kind of, you know, goes along with the constant trash talking and commanding and demanding of things, but she really bullies this guy. And they've only been together for eight months, by the way. That's another point I just wanted to, <laughs> to get out there. I don't know how compatible this relationship is. And I would not be surprised if after this episode, we look it up and they've been divorced. They didn't really eat breakfast. They piddled at their cereal. 
Zach didn't eat at all. And that's not really what you want. And this lady's hate streak just continues. So it's the first day of the dad having to get the kids ready for school. He does his best making them breakfast. He gets them in the car on time and he's getting them to school, getting them all dressed up. And she's just sitting there hating. Like you literally can't win with some of these parents. It just shows how sad mentally some of these families are on this show. It's very frustrating to watch. You're so immature. And there's actually kind of a sad moment where this dad cries as he realizes how much he misses as a result of working so much and working these jobs where he just doesn't have the opportunity to take his kids to school and to see these memories. So maybe we're seeing a shift in this man throughout this episode, hopefully, because I, I need to see some family improve at the end of this instead of all four of these toxic people just making each other pissed off the entire time. Oh, and meanwhile, on the other side, yeah, the Van Noy guy didn't last long. His second job, he up and quits. And it's funny, you see the office manager like, dude, you don't want to clean these lockers when you weren't supposed to and you just have to do it for a TV show? Why are you quitting? You're really leaving us? You're, you're leaving us high and dry? Like trying to guilt him. God, I hate employers and I hate the state of working in this country. Managers are losers and I'm sorry, <laughs> there's nobody that's going to be suffering if these lockers don't get cleaned in time. Whatever this random warehouse is. As punishment for quitting his job, Don wants Hallmark to clear the leaves from the yard. Yes. I'm in charge. You have to do this. is my oh, way. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> it just immediately cuts to him raking up the leaves right after he said he wasn't going to do it. But that's right. This dude gets punished in the backyard once again in the same field where he had to burn his dreams down into dust. He now has to clean up the leaves after quitting his job because a real man has to do something physically painful throughout the day that he doesn't want to do or else he ain't a real man raise some questions in, in my relationship with my wife. The whole thing has got to be changed for the better or I can't see spending my life the same way. And apparently him getting bossed around, this actor dude, has really opened his eyes to how much he dislikes being kind of verbally abused like this. So he's realizing that this relationship cannot continue with his new wife if things don't change. We might actually be seeing the first <laughs> result of this show being a divorce like immediately. That is insane, dude. But I feel bad for the dude. Hopefully this shows that he needs to stand up for himself a little bit more. It seems to me that we're both sort of looking for the same kind of an answer right. or the same kind of a change in our in our um Marriages. And it sounds like both of them, both of the passive people in these couples realize they're kind of being walked all over in this relationship and it is not 50-50 like the other partner wants them to believe. Hopefully this means they'll stand up for themselves. And I think this is something that if you're in a relationship or you've been in a relationship like this in the past, you understand this is a tough thing to do to actually stand up for yourself and set some boundaries and advocate for yourself. But that really is self-care. That's like a bit of focus on me in my life outside of YouTube recently, just trying to focus on me and setting boundaries with people. It feels very awkward at first when you're a pushover like me, but trust me, it's for the best. You've showed me how to love my family more. Really? Aww. I just want you to know you'll be a friend, you know, forever. And then on the front porch, the very final night, the Harris father delivers a monologue that is just powerful. I mean, it could almost bring me to tears. He basically says that even though this woman was not effective in the way she did it, she kind of forced this guy to go into this role. It, the tough love did bring him to some realizations. I mean, last night he was up until 3 a.m. like his wife often is and realizing how long she works and how hard she works, he was not giving her enough credit, nor was he giving enough love and time and focus to his family. So it sounds like a lot of change is coming for both these couples as a result of this experience. So despite this episode being insanely toxic and just full of fights and burning people's dreams to the ground, I still cannot believe that happened. It seems like they are changing for the better. Because Hallmark and I are very passive and you two are very, you know, aggressive go-getters. I was kind of hoping you would butt head so that you could feel how it feels to be on the other end of the head button. So now the couples are back together. And I mean, this Karen mother kind of pieced it together very well. Like I said, this was one of those unique episodes because both the passive people and both the more aggressive people were put together. And I think seeing how unpleasant it is to be around somebody else that's passive or aggressive when you are that way really opened their eyes to seeing how toxic their element to the relationship is. Kim has a quick temper and a shorter, <laughs> and a shorter, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The point is you get angry about little tiny things. The one thing I will say in this entire episode, I don't want to sound biased, but this Van Noy mother, she's the one that seems to have escaped having to actually face any demons or do any improvement. I mean, look at that clip you just saw. This guy is trying to say in a very nice, pleasant way that she can be kind of hard headed and aggressive. And she immediately is like, no, I'm not like <laughs> just showing her true colors. I, I don't know why I just get very bad vibes from this woman. And it's because she seems so immature and angry when she's out of control this episode. 
episode. And even though the Harris father and it seems like the Harris wife and the Van Noy father had made a lot of personal growth and an introspection in this show, she doesn't seem to have been forced to do any of that. So I think she's kind of getting away without developing herself much. Kim's, uh, she's taught me a few things. Cooking's no problem. Taking care of the kids, putting them to bed, giving them their baths and reading them stories before they go to bed, it's no problem. Wow. And the Harris dude admits, you know what, I'm gonna help out around the house. So that is beautiful. It seems like this final talk was a spot for everybody to kind of speak candidly and open-mindedly about their relationships. And in the follow-up episode, it shows that all of them are helping each other out. The Van Noy family got a maid because the father is actually out working now. He's still trying to pursue acting, but he's working a day job. So shout out to him. It might not be manual labor though. Oh, it is, he's painting. Okay, so he is a man, thankfully, at least in the Harris mother's eyes. And the uh, mother of this family started meditating I, I don't know if that's going to help her anger issues at all. And then on the other side, the Harrises now do chores together on chore day. So boom, both families have improved. I need to go freaking lay down because this episode was insane. Quite a long one, but full of insane moments. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below of these two families. They both had some very interesting quirks to them. But you know what? This episode ended pretty wholesomely. And this show has a good job of doing that, even though the pacing does feel weird sometimes. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you to everybody supporting me over there. Feel free to check that out if you want to support the channel. If not, just leave a like and a comment. It helps me out a lot. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And until next time, peace out.